second line. Thank you so much for joining us today for this, what is this called? The Women, Witches of Wicked. Witches of Wicked. And here they are, the Witches of Wicked. Uh, I'm Chris Brown, I'm Kevin Miyagi, and we are the Sentimental Men uh, from the Sentimental Men Podcast, which is a podcast dedicated to the women of musical theater, and more specifically, the women of Wicked, that we have today. So, let's go down the line and introduce ourselves, starting with Talia, who I should mention, we just did a panel right before this where Talia got fully green. And then we went to the bathroom on this floor and she de-greened and now she's here. Yeah, so if I look absolutely psycho compared to these beautiful, like, the, the, the highlight, the, the contour, and I'm like, oh, I just threw some concealer on. Um, anyway, yes, hi, I'm Talia Seskauer. Um, okay, wait, introduce yourself and then give us your wicked resume. Okay. I want to see if you guys can remember it. Okay, I'm Talia Seskauer. Hello. Um, I played Elphaba on the national tour, Munchkinland National Tour, which is the second national tour of Wicked uh, uh, from 2019 to up to, until the pandemic and then post pandemic, I guess it was still going on. Uh, but we came back anyway in 2021 and then did that for six months and then I took over on Broadway as Alphaba in uh, May of 2022 and finished up my contract this past March. Hello. Oh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Haley Pachoon and I play Glinda on the national tour with Jenny and with Alyssa um, and from, I don't know when, 13 to 14. And that's it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny Denoya. Um, I, let's see. I started in the show in 2006 as a dancer swing. And uh, over the years moved into being an understudy. And then I was a standby for seven years uh, between the Chicago company and Broadway. And I did a couple other different productions as a standby slash alternate, and then I on played four continents. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I <laughs> and then I played Elphaba on the second national tour, Munchkinland, with Haley for a year from thirteen to fourteen, and then I was Elphaba on Broadway on and off. My main contract was two thousand sixteen to seventeen, but I most recently came back as a standby. Uh, and stood by on Broadway for a few different wonderful witches, Talia being one of them included. And uh, I left the show in July of last year. And I actually have popped back in a few other times. So we're not gonna get into it, but I've been around for a while. Nice to meet you all. You <laughs> never leave your Amazing. Like on the yellow brick road for a long time. Um, hello, my name is Amanda Jane Cooper. Fun fact. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, that's a fun fact that that's my name. No, fun fact, the last um, performance that I did of Wicked was with Jenny in February of last year, which is so cool. But um, I started in 2011 from April to November on the Emerald City National Tour, the first Jeez. national tour. Well, yeah, what did you say? Rest in peace, the first time. Oh, yes, we love, we love. And then I went to the um, Munchkinland tour from December 2015 to March 2017. And then I came to Broadway, where I got to make my Broadway debut, and it was so exciting. Um, from July 2017 to December 2018. Um, and in there was the 15th anniversary. It was so, so, so fun. And then last year I was back between Jenna Claire Mason and Brittany Johnson for a couple weeks in February. So, so grateful. And you also may recognize Amanda from the commercial for Wicked. <laughs> she is the commercial window. <laughs> Back 
in 2010, and I uh, was the understudy for Eden Espinoza. And then a few years later, moved to the Second National Tour, where I was the standby for Jenny and, and a few other girls. Um, but for two and a half years, I was the standby. And then I played lead out on the tour for one year. And then I came to New York and Broadway, and I made my Broadway debut as the standby for Alphaba. And then uh, I did that for a few years, left to go do another show, and then came back and did another contract of standby. And I stood by for both Jenny and Talia. So I know these girls very well. <laughs> and then in March, I uh, made my debut as lead. So. <laughs> So we're going into the 20th anniversary year of Wicked the Musical, and we like to start these conversations with how did Wicked come into your life as a person? So not necessarily as an actress, but what is your first touch point with the show? Uh, I was in a musical theater, like, after school class, and this girl walked in with, we all know it, we've all seen it, the Wicked vocal selections. <laughs> And I was like, I just saw this very cool new show. It's called Wicked. And she brought in Popular. And I was like, I want to see Popular. Like, that's the song I want to sing. I, didn't hear, I, haven't, I haven't, hadn't heard any other song. Um, that changed after I heard the other songs. I was like, oh, let's sing these songs. Um, and then I went home and told my mom. And we got the, the, the cast recording and listened to it nonstop. And she took us, my sister and I, to New York. We saw it on Broadway. and. Uh, my, my first witches were Megan Hilty and Shoshana Bean. Not a duo. Yeah, and uh, from from that point on, it was hooked, and I was like, I I want to I want to do that one day. Mine was um, original cast during previews. I got front row seats, and I remember seeing the show, and I said, I'm going to play that role someday. And I was like, it's the first time I've seen a role that's a funny female who gets to sing really high. And that's my dream and my goal. And so I made it a fact that I would only ever play Glinda. And I was told I'll never play Glinda until I understudy her because Wicked likes to work. They really like to promote people, which is great. Um, you know, you put in your time, they promote. I mean, walking examples, you know. Um, and I don't know, there was just something about it where I was like, nope, I'm only going to play Glinda. And so um, I auditioned for the show throughout six years. I guess that's, that I should have started my journey with that. <laughs> my journey was a six year journey to get there. And then I finally got it. Um, but yeah, my first witches were Adina and Kristen. And I still, I still saw it when the big hat was in the opening. Um, so I just was hooked. It was the best. <laughs> yes, the hat. <laughs> um, I first heard Wicked when I was on tour with Mamma Mia. I was, yeah, Mamma Mia. Um, I was actually at the National Theater in Washington, D.C., and I was sitting backstage in a dressing room with a bunch of other girls, and somebody was playing Defying Gravity, and it had just come out, because so it was like 2003. Um, but, um, I was just like, oh my god, this music is unbelievable, and I was already like, Adina Menzel, you know, I wanted to play Maureen and Rent so badly, just from hearing her voice, and so I continued to listen to the songs, and at this point in my career, I was a dancer in the ensemble. I'd never sung anything on stage by myself before, so, I don't know, it was a, a big, big dream, but yeah, I just kind of, I never actually saw the show, until I booked the show. Um, and my first witches were Stacey Morgan Lewis and Christy Cates. Wow. Christy Cates called out mid first act and the understudy went on before Defying Gravity. And it was magnificent, it was wonderful. Courtney Corey, I think was the understudy. So, um, but yeah, that was my journey. And I, I was floored seeing the show for the first time. I was like, what did I get myself into? But as a swing. You know, because it's a huge show, but yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Um, I grew up just outside of Philadelphia, which is very nice to hear, yes. And um, so I think I was a freshman in high school when the show came out, and our drama guild took a bus up here to see the original cast. I was floored, like you, and I saw Kristen, and kind of like what you were saying, Haley, I kind of like, could almost picture myself up there and I was just so blown away by her and like encouraged by her. I was like, oh, maybe there's like a path. 
for me if I wanted to maybe do this? I don't know. Um, so that was awesome. And then we actually went back a few months later with uh, my parents and my siblings. So super grateful. Saw the original cast twice. <laughs> Um, when uh, Wicked came out, it was, what, 2003? I was in high school, and I was just getting into, I was big into choir and big into singing. I always knew that I wanted to sing. Um, but in high school, I heard the cast album for Wicked the Musical, and I heard it, and I heard uh, Defy Gravity and Wizard and I, and I was like, this is what my voice is meant to do. This is what I'm going to do. It was like sure from that moment. I knew I, I always wanted to be a singer, um, but as soon as I heard the music, it like touched me in a very deep way, character-wise and musically. So I, it just kind of attached then. Hasn't left me since. <laughs> okay, Haley. Yes? Six years of auditioning. Yeah. <laughs> Take us back to the first audition and then what what were the touch points over those six years until we finally booked? Uh, well, the material never changed. It was always the same material. Um, I always say it was like, I was really thankful that it happened at the time it did. I think if, you know, these roles really require growth at, for you as a human being. And I think I, I don't think I was ready for it yet at that time. And I'm really glad it happened at the time that it did because then I met my life partner, Jenny. <laughs> We call each other our life partners because we are besties through and through. Um, but yeah, it was the same little material of like the very beginning of Let Us Make Mad, Let Us Also. You guys know the two. And then there's a little clip of Popular. You do the scene before, you do a little cut of Popular, and then there's another scene, right? Fallen House scene? Yeah, it's been a while. I can't remember what was in the packet. Uh, but I had also, I worked with Joe Mantello. I did Pell Joey on Broadway too. So that was also helpful that he got to know me a little bit during that. Uh, and so finally, by the time it was my final final audition, he was in the room. And so I wasn't this complete stranger. He knew me, we had had a relationship. And I think that was also helpful. You know, I had done up to that point, I think six other Broadway shows. So that was another thing that was maybe helpful. More people knew me, but. Yeah. How did you keep, was there a point over the six years where you thought, okay, maybe this isn't going to happen for me? Yeah, it was the last time. I was like, this is it. I'm not going in anymore. And then thank God, I, thank Oz, I vote. <laughs> Does anybody else remember uh, a point where they were like, you know what, maybe I'm not going to get this. Or a point where they were like, no, this is definitely mine. Right, what was yeah, that? so the, the last time it was like, I was ending my uh, standby contract and I was uh, standing by for Talia and I was like, this is it. I'm getting too old for this. I've done this too long. Like, if I'm, if they're not going to move me up this time for this year, I have to, like, release it from myself. And I didn't want to. This is my, my therapist was like, you have to. You have to either, they have to either give it to you or you need to let it go. So I was like, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. So thankfully it worked out, but it was like, I had to be okay with letting it go before it came to me. That's, sorry, that, that is exactly when it happens for you, too. And we've had conversations about many, it. Many, many conversations. <laughs> it's been a long journey. I was a standby for seven years before they gave me the full-time contract. And I remember I was standing by on Broadway. And I was on Saturday and Sunday, and Tuesday and Wednesday. And another, you know, Elphaba spot was coming up on the second national tour and this was probably my fourth time re-auditioning for Alphaba. So my audition Sorry, was while you were playing the role. No, like, I was not right, standing up, but you had you know you were in the show on Saturday. I was in the show. Right. And on Monday I went in for the for the show in the audition room and I walked out of that room and I remember saying to someone, a part of the audition, I was just like, listen, I can't do this anymore. My body and soul needs to release this moment. So if you're not going to give it to me, that's totally fine. But please don't call me in again, because I can't continue to audition. And I booked it. And that's when it happened. So it is a, it's a release thing. But yeah, definitely. Well, it is interesting, because Haley referenced how typically Wicked, you see someone work their way up from understudy to standby to principal. And I think it's interesting the group we have here because Talia, Haley, and Amanda, you both were straight to principal, and then Alyssa and Jenny, you had very long journeys. Pros and cons of each journey. I felt like, I mean, I'm sure 
uh, Jenny and Alyssa can speak to this, that like alphabet changed for them at, like well, as they grew through their experience. Um, the only way that I can speak to that is that I had a pandemic in between my contracts, pretty much. Um, but I think that's a con of just doing it right away. Is that like, oh my gosh, like I would love to see my journey, how my journey, you know, grew through the role over the years. Um, but I also got to like do it right away, and get it done. You know what I mean? So that was like a a, a pro for me. But I, I'm sure that if I returned to the role in a few years, that she'd be different than. And, and I'm sure like these ladies can speak to how their Elfie was different, like when in the you different contexts. When first started, did you, was there a moment where you're like, God, I wish I had maybe stood by for this so I could have learned the ropes a little bit? Well, I never thought that I would, I mean, I had heard what, you know, how it, how it happened for people. And so when I went in for my first audition, which was in August of 2019, and it was to be like the immediate replacement for uh, the tour of the book, because they love to just like do things at the last minute. Yeah, so tight to the very so, like, last they're like, They're like, okay, if you're auditioning for this, uh, in two weeks, you're gonna fly out to San Jose and be the tour. And so I, it was my first audition for Wicked, and I was like, I, I knew going in, I was like, I'm, this is just to introduce myself. This is not going to be, I'm not, this is not my journey, like, with this show. Like, I'm, this is gonna be the, probably the first of many. And so I went in with that mindset of just being like, hi, okay, here's who I am. Like, I hope I don't just, I just wanna leave a good first impression on them. And so I went and I did, did my thing, and then, um, Got, had a call back the following week with just like one creative and like no one else and a, and a video camera and that was that was it and I, at that point too I was like I didn't get this but this was like nice to like meet them and then like a couple days later they were like come hack your bag because you're going on tour um what was your question? <laughs> Amanda and Haley can you talk to us about your experience coming in and leading a company brand new? Sure. Yes, so um, the first time I played her, I was a baby. Mm -hmm. um, I was 22, um, 10 months out of college, which is actually where I met Stephen Schwartz when I was a sophomore or a junior, and it sang popular for him, and he- You were 22? Yeah, the first time. You were a baby. Which was so, such an honor, and also, you know, um, you, we grow so much in our 20s, so I was so grateful to, um, you know, I had like a four-year gap in between Emerald City and Munchkinland, and it, there was, uh, I'm so, I'm so grateful that I have, um, and then the last time I went back to was like a three-year gap, so getting to grow as a person and bring that into the role, there's so much depth there, you know, there's such a transformation that Glenda has, and I feel like I lived it out in my real life in all those years, and so what I was able to like bring to it was, um, I'm just grateful for all the chances. Um, but yeah, I first auditioned in April of my senior year. Didn't go anywhere then. Um, I remember, I think, I forget if I like drove from Pittsburgh or took a bus. I think I took a bus from Pittsburgh to New York. I was so nervous. Um, for auditioning for principal at the time? Yes, at the time. And didn't, um, didn't go my way then. And then October of that same year started going back in. And I think it was like four or five different callbacks and like work sessions and stuff and that's what started the journey but um but i truly you guys i truly have been changed for good mm -hmm. by this show. <laughs> and getting to come back um multiple times and getting to work with all of these amazing alphabets who bring something new to your glinda is so fascinating to me um because every woman brings something so different and it extracts um, in the tennis match of the show, you know, it extracts something different from you. So, such a, such an honor. Yeah. Jenny and Alyssa, talk to us about the evolution of your alphabet from when you first started covering the role to where you are now. When I started, I was 23. I was also a baby. Uh, when I was the understudy, and I had never done a, really a professional production like this before, like the, I started with this big show, this big production contract, it was huge. So I didn't really know the ways of the theater. Um, and so I kind of went in there not knowing what I was doing, but I knew that I loved it. And I'm sure I like, <laughs> it was crazy because I was not really meant for the ensemble. Like I'm kind of a noodle. <laughs> so, so they were being like, oh, okay, we're gonna have to change around all the ensemble tracks to make sure this girl is okay and doesn't 
knock anyone over on stage. And so I, I really like learned a lot through just doing Wicked over the years and kind of finding my place within that and finding my place in theater and learning how to be a theater artist and learning the ropes. And, and it was so nice to like have people around me who had done Wicked or had done shows for years and to learn from them. So like, I feel like when I first started, I didn't know anything and now I am like live and breathe Wicked. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just thinking when you were talking and what Haley said before, like, um, th being thankful that it took some time because those seven years that I was a standby felt long in the moment, but looking back at it now, I'm so grateful that I have had that time because I, like Alyssa, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to lead a company. Um, and I got to stand by for like, the, some of, I mean, everybody's the top health of it. I mean, yeah. all these women Same. that play like this right. role are unbelievable and I got to learn and extract information from so many of them. And, um, and you know, like there's something that happens when you first start playing Alphaba. There's like this, I mean, she's such a powerful person, but like there's this proving yourself thing that comes with when you first step into this show. I'm sure it happens with Glinda as well. But when you're really young, you feel like you have to do something for all of these other people. Whether it's people out there in the audience, it's the people running the show, it's the people, and it's not something that anybody's doing purposefully. It's just how you feel when you step into this role. So I think what has changed for me with life that has happened throughout this 17 years that I've been in the show, um, I've grown up, I've like had lots of highs, I've had lots of lows. I had a child who's back there looking at a phone. And you know, it's, uh, you know, you, you care a little less about what you're doing for other people and it starts to become something for you. And there's a strength in there, and I think that's something that I'm just really grateful that I had that time to build up in myself because it wasn't there when, when I think first joined the show. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you feel like that switch or that shift came when you stepped into it full time, or did you kind of build up to it then? It did, but I will say that it it was built in that year that I was on tour, and it took a while. I mean, Alyssa remembers, you power through those first few months of your contract, like, I can do every single show. No, you try. You try. <laughs> you, you did very well. I, I, did, I did well, yeah. Yes. But like, you know, again, it's like being a marathon runner. Once you get going, it's like, ooh, I'm in alphabet shape now until, you know, something does take you down. It just happens. But, you know, it, I do think that it, it took it took me leaving the show for a while to really get it. Like after that contract was done, I got the pace of the show down and I got like the moments down and I felt freer in those moments where I could just live as opposed to like concentrating on all the notes I've been given. And when I came back into the show on Broadway after having Jules, um, it was the first time that I was like, this isn't a, I don't know, there, there was something, it was the, I, I don't really care. Not that I didn't care, I cared a lot. But like it was that element of like, you know, life is so much bigger. It, it, it's not just about this show and this one thing. So it's easier to, to do it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but. Talia. Yes. Jenny and Alyssa are both pretty iconic alpha buzz in the lore of Wicked. Yes, they are. And I know that you grew up as a fan, so what was it like to then have them stand by for you? Uh, I was deeply honored. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I feel like my position is interesting because I grew up like an, an obsessive Wicked fan. Like, truly obsessive. I still feel like I'm a Wicked fan. I love it so much. Um, and just, I of course had heard about Jenny and Alyssa, like stalked them on Instagram when I was like, like watched all their bootlegs. Like they're like seriously. Like these are incredible women that I that I admire. Um, and so when I when I heard that I'd be taking over, and I had, didn't know about Alyssa yet, but I knew about Jenny, and I was so honored um, to be in the same building with her and get to learn from her. 
um, because she, she's been doing it and because I've, she's someone that I, like, I've seen her work and, and love her work. Um, the cool thing is, uh, I, I think we can all say this about people, what, you know, when you're the lead and you have a standby, like, I view it as completely, uh, it's a team. Like, there's not one person, like, you, you, you're both doing this role and telling the story and it works best if you view it as a team effort. And so, um, like, you're both in service of the show and of each other and that's just how I view it and that's how it works best. And so, to get to have both of these women in, who I look up to and admire and respect as my teammate, like, I, who could be luckier, right? So, um, yeah, that's just how I feel. <laughs> Um, Haley and Amanda, can you also talk a little bit about, um, do you or did you feel that pressure to kind of like prove yourself coming into the company, especially as straight to principles? Yeah, I think it's also the iconicness of these roles that is so, you just, everyone has seen it, everyone's got their favorite, you're the new kid in school, and it's like, what do you got, you know? So, but you also have to follow the rules, but you also want to bring yourself out and respect you as an artist, but respect the material that you're given, respect the people that are in charge of making sure that it's respected. And so it's a lot of different shows you might have in your back pocket, you know? And um, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. I do a lot of press events for Wicked and so still to this day, I'm still performing the material, and if you're at OzDust tomorrow night, most of us will be there, but, um, but it's still that feeling of, oh my god, people are seeing this, what are they thinking? Um, it's terrifying, um, but it's still really fun, and, and they are so great of like, they want you to be you, and bring you out, because that, ideally what we do as performers, that's what makes all of us so special, um, yeah, there, there is a sense of pressure, but it's fun. <laughs> Amanda, how did you feel coming in so young, too? Oh, goodness. I mean, yeah, I just, like, wanted to do a really good job. I care, and we all care so much, you know? Like, I just want to do a good job. I remember my first horrible was Randy Danson, and there was a, we were very close, and I think I remember this one day where she, kind of just said like, you can you can let go now. You can let go, like you can trust yourself. And that was super helpful. And I think um, coming back and getting to do it years later too, just it's true, the more you, s it's like not about, okay, what's happening out here, it's just like, what, it, what can I do to serve this piece and to be there with my fellow actors and, the creative team, I think, is really, like you were saying, they don't want us to all be, like, copy-paste of each other. So even finding different moments, you know, where some girls will do the one this way or some, you know, creative thing this other way. So the, the more freedom, the more fun, I think, and also the more, um, yeah, just satisfying it is, like, as an artist. And it's definitely a journey, though, because it's a, it's a, it's a big um, ship to steer. And so you wanna like honor the responsibility that you've been given and tell the story that needs to be told. But part of the magic of it is that each person is gonna bring a different thing to it and trusting that they've brought you there for a reason. I think remembering that too has been helpful. I, I came in really young, I was 23 as well when I started on the tour, leading the tour. And it was, I was absolutely terrified. I had no time to lie. I had no, I had no time to prepare. I, I was told I was going on the road. I had a singular week to be like, do I take a voice lesson? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I freaked out and I, I got to this like theater in San Jose and I had my first music rehearsal and I said, the first, I said, hi, listen, I'm concerned they might have made a mistake. <laughs> That's what I said when I got there because I was a crazy wicked fan. I watched all the bootlegs. I was immediately like, scared about being compared to other people and like the the pressure was immense and i was like i think i think they might have made a mistake I, I just like how could they have known i only had two auditions like it was like what do i do and he was like they didn't make a mistake we don't make mistakes Wicked doesn't and, make I said, mistakes. and i said okay and i we did our coaching at the end he was like 
no one made a mistake. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be okay. And I was like, okay, here we go. But I think the biggest thing about it is, and I get this question a lot, I'm sure we all have, is like, so many legendary women have played these parts. Like, how do you not compare? Like, we are all so different. And that's why this show- We've seen the YouTube compilation. Yes, we've so seen the But there's just, no one sounds the same. And people are always writing like, oh, she sounds like a combination of these two. No, we're all just different people. And that's the beautiful thing and the staying power of this show is that every single one of us is a different human being. And so we all are singing the same music. Is it gonna sound the same? Absolutely not. And that's amazing. And so I think the cool thing about being a fan and also having been in it is that like, I used to compare too, but like that's helpful to nobody because we're all different. So, yeah. Yeah. Here, here, <laughs> that we've noticed during this podcast is it really is a sisterhood of witches. Yes. Are there any words of advice from an Elfie Glinda mentor, someone reached out to as you're going into the role that really has stuck with you to this day? I remember when I joined the show, um, there were a couple of Glindas before me that I was friends with. I know Chandra Lee, Chandra Lee Schwartz and I did the Hairspray tour together. Um, and I can't remember if Katie Rose and I talked beforehand, Aaron Mackey as well, and I just was so appreciative of them saying, we are here for you anytime you need us. We know what you're about to go through, and you don't, and so anytime you need someone to ask any questions, or you're having a day where you're sad, or especially on the road, you know, you're sleeping in a different hotel every couple weeks, different air quality, it's just not the same. And so you miss your touchstones of real life. And I just remember all three of them being so kind and saying, it is a sisterhood, we've all been through it, we are here for you whenever you need us. And it's the same for all of us, whether you're green or pink, like it is, it's a sisterhood. And um, it's a special club that only people who have played these roles really do understand. Yeah, that's what I've heard from pretty much every witch is like, you don't really understand what doing Elphaba or Glinda is like unless you've done it. So for me, I kind of, my people that have really affected my life as Elphaba are the people that I've stood by for. Like I really learn from those people and they really, get it. And so I would try to like have some sort of relationship with each one of those girls um, to, you know, figure out what that was like even. And that, you know, really influenced my performance today is just having those relationships of girls that have been through it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even if you're not close to the people that are playing it while you're standing by for them, they'll always say to you, like, let me know if you need anything. Like, I feel like every alphabet, Di Rossioli is, I stood by for her in Chicago and on Broadway, and she was real, she was my mentor, I think, with the show, because I watched her put in as a standby. That's when we joined the company together, and I really, truly watched her alphabet journey, and I got to watch her learn how to play alphabet, and play alphabet in the most magnificent way. Um, but yeah, I've always joked that I, I wanted to start like a, a witch camp, like where when somebody's going into the show, you have like your intake for being prepared to go into the show, and then you have your outtake when you're leaving the show. <laughs> I feel like everyone would join. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like a support group. It's a support group. We should make some PDFs. <laughs> yeah. We want to do a reality show and put all of you in a house. For I like know. A house. Oh my god, that would be so fun. It would be really loud. That would be really loud. Really loud. That would be watched. Um, I got paired with. Uh, I got I got paired with Megan Hilty when I was graduating from college as my big sis. What? Hashtag blessed. So then when I got the call that I would be going out with the tour, I was like, Can I call you? And I think we spent probably forty five minutes, an hour, and I was just like, What does it mean to? What's per diem? <laughs> What's calling out? What's uh, stage right? Just kidding. I knew what that was by then. Um, but she was so helpful in placating some of my fears, giving me some great tips. And then I will tell you too, I feel like I was so blessed because I got to go in on Jackie Burns' like last six weeks on tour. 
And she also was my first self of on Broadway, which is so special. And she really has been such a strong anchoring point for me because she had been around. She was such a like great, solid friend to me through being so new to the world, both on the road and then um, here. I think the cool thing, something you might not know about when us witches go into the show is that we, it's pretty impossible to have your own costumes at the start. So uh, what you do before you go in is you have a costume fitting and you go to this huge uh, Wicked wardrobe stock room that is honestly every Wicked fan's dream of it's seeing. Like a it is a warehouse so bad. in, in, in Midtown. It's with really rows, you guys should get rows and rows of costumes. It's, it's, it's insane. And so I was taken to the Elphaba Isle and there it was. Every Wicked Witch dress with every Elphaba that's ever done it there in front of me. And I, w I guess didn't have a lot of fittings that day. And so I was like, can I try on Stephanie J. Black's dress, please? <laughs> I was like, you know. They let me. They let me try. They, they, they did. It was kind of insane. I but so cool. the goal of this is, is that you're going to be put into costumes of another alphabet, essentially, or a combination of which to fit you while your own costumes are being made. So um, I saw, I'm a Penn State alum, I saw Caroline Bowman on Broadway in 2014, also a Penn State alum, um, and lo and behold, guess whose costumes I started out in? The costumes I had seen her wear on stage. I, I, so I wore, I started my contract in those clothes, which was cool because I had seen them on stage, and now I was in them, and I love this person and this human, and when I first got the call, she was the first person I called, she spent three hours with me on, the, on FaceTime, just talking me down, talking me off the ledge. And I got to wear those costumes for uh, some of them for my entire run on tour. And what's cool about this is that you actually feel like the Green Girl Sisterhood when you're in them. At least I did because I was like, I feel like this person has gone through what I'm going through, History. and I can be in these clothes. And like it, it, it like kind of gave me a sense of strength, and I felt that through the clothes, which is cool. Um, so that was cool. That's the one thing. The second thing and is there's a sense too of like somebody else wore this and they got through. So I can too, okay. so I can too. Another cool thing about having these two ladies uh, as my stand standbys is that like, I knew, not only have they been a part of the Green Girl Sisterhood, but if like, I needed anything, they had been through it. So, you know, the voice memos that, you know, we'd said. So many voice memos. So many voice memos, but like, I knew that I had like, a backbone in the building of someone that understood, and that's, and they knew that they had me, you know? So we had each other and just what an incredible gift. And then, you know, post our contracts, we're here for for this lovely person who, who is going through it right now and doing an incredible job. Go see her. Um, but you know, that's the, that's the beautiful thing about this and it will outlive the show, I think, the sisterhood. Okay, we're almost at time, but we have two more actor heady questions that I wanna go down the line. The first is, what is the box that you wanted to tick with your portrayal of your character? <laughs> I thought at first you said Bach, and I was like, what? Bach? Okay. Um, I can't, it, someone else has to go first. I, 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 or to rephrase it, what is something that like, going in, you were like, oh, this is a quality of health about. I want to make sure that I really play this out, or I want to make sure that people feel like my Glinda is compassionate or something. <laughs> I'm still figuring that out. I don't know that I went, I know, right? We're still figuring it out. Um, I don't think that I went in with, okay, this is a box I want to check, but I think throughout the journey, I'm just like, if I can keep coming back to sincerity and earnestness, I think those are the words, I guess, yeah. that I've hoped into or tried to. Which is funny too, like with Glinda being the more comedic of the two, it's like the only way to keep that seriously, genuinely funny is to be super earnest. So it's interesting to hear you, you say that. Haley, do you really Yeah, do I agree with that because it's so easy to want to lean into those funny bits, which times you do, you know, it's the eighth show of the week, you're like, I'm going to lean into it, it's fine, let's wake each other up, you know, but I think comedy um, works so much better in a truthfulness place, and especially with this show, uh, you are a real person, you're not playing a cartoon character, and that's very important for me as an actor, I've played a lot of different roles where 
You know, they might be like, do, do a funnier voice or something, you know, like a dumb blonde voice or something. And I'm like, but that's not a, to me, I'm like, that's not a, she's, she's in Guys and Dolls, you know? Yeah. And uh, sometimes to me, I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like a real person. So you have to find the truth in something. And I think that that is very important because not only are they real people in this Oz world, but um, they're so iconic to everyone that you can't play them as this like cartoon because they're real. I think, okay, I think I would go with like the honesty, obviously, but like the rawness of Alphaba, like because you know, when you play a role for so long, you don't want your performance to be slick. You know, you don't want it to be like in the pocket, kind of sitting and gliding, you know, and just kind of having the freedom for new moments to come in. Because even in the last year that I was in the show, I was like, light bulbs would come up where I'd be like, oh my God, I didn't, never thought of it that way. Which is probably why I've come back to the show so much because those moments are there and there's a freedom that you have to let yourself kind of just allow it to happen. So I think if, if I'm in that box, checking that box, I'm always like in a good place. One thing that I, I feel for me is that Alphaba never feels bad for herself. Um, and that's like a note that I got very early on is that she's never feeling sorry for herself. Like she knows who she is and she's unapologetic about it. So for me, if I ever found myself getting into like the, you know, bringing my personal life potentially into the show, it's very easy to do. I'm like, I'm seeing I'm not that girl and like I'm having a bad day today. No, you can't. You know what I mean? Because this is, it, it's, it hits harder if this is just like an acknowledgement and an understanding of who she is rather than, a, oh, I'm never gonna be this person. Because that's not what she's going through or thinking. So it was, to me, always, always returning to that quality. For me, it feels like the more I go through in my personal life as Alyssa, the more I learn from Alphaba. Like, I feel like a big thing that I like to bring to the role is this whole experience of, of overcoming adversity. And I feel like that's something that, you know, everyone has to do. But like to bring that to the role and to the character, it's something so deep for me. So it's like overcoming adversity and the depth that goes into that, it just runs straight through your blood. So it's, for me, it's like the overcoming adversity is what I like to bring to it. Okay, so we have a theory on our podcast. We sure do. We did Alphaba, they each have big three songs. Yeah. And we have a theory that each actress who takes on the role resonates with one of the songs the most, and it informs their performance in some way. <laughs> so, for the alphabas, are you a Wizard and I, Defying Gravity, or No Good Deed, Alphaba? It can mean whatever you want it to mean. All we ask is that you explain why. And for the Glindas, the corresponding question is, are you a No One Warns the Wicked, a popular, or a Thank Goodness Glinda, and why? Well, I answered this question on your podcast, and I'm going to go with the same answer I said before. And I'm definitely a wizard in I Alphaba. Um, Which is so rare. Like, I, that, it's that you blows my mind. Like, it's, it blows my mind, but I, I don't know. That's just in my head. Um, yeah, I love The Wizard and I. Uh, it is the hardest song for me personally to sing in the show, just because it's the first one. And, you know, if you have nerves or if you're having a bad day, you know, you're, you have to get in, you have to get going right off the bat, but I just, I love, I love singing it, I love the build of the song, and I love, it's kind of where you can like free up yourself, because you can really like see the hopefulness that's coming out of Alphaba, and it, I think that's why, that that's what hooks people to Alphaba really quickly, because they watch her come out on stage and be treated the way that she's being treated, and then they watch her have this moment by herself and she gets to just say honestly, this is what I want and then I can get it, you know? It's just such a beautiful, beautiful moment. I, I love it and I love watching everybody do it too because it's, everybody's so different and it's so beautiful. And you should see her back bend when she hits that those last couple My back bend. Awesome. You don't know it, but I would watch her from the side every night, and she gives the most hot, vocal technique. Jenny's a dancer. It's not us. 
It's beautiful. I'm your number one fan. All right, Haley. Oh, I'm a thank goodness, Linda. Um, it's my most favorite thing to sing in the whole show. I try to sing it as much as I can at any event. If they're like, can you sing something from again? I'm like, I will be singing Thank Goodness. And they're like, we don't want that. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> I, did, I made my own track. Like, I'm obsessed with it, yeah. I love it. Um, I love it for so many reasons as an actor. It was the first time in my whole career I just got to stand and act and sing. And uh, it's, it resonates with me at many different points of my life. It's just such a real and raw moment of just, uh, ex, ex, she's fully exposed and it's terrifying and I loved it so much and it's written just beautifully and also to have the eyes of the entire company staring at you almost as you're having this like emotional breakdown in front of them. Um, it's just so fun, and I love it more than anything. <laughs> Emotional breakdowns are fun. <laughs> I'd say for me, I started off as a No Gadid Alphaba, and I have landed as a Defiant Gravity Alphaba. I think before when I was a No Gadid Alphaba, it was like, that is one feeling. She doesn't really change. She, cha she decides in No Gadid who she is. But really the change happens during Defying Gravity, and I love the extent that that song kind of covers, you know, vulnerability, power, you know, defiance, and defiance, <laughs> gravity. Um, but I, I, there's just so much there, and vocally it goes from like the very bottom and like slow to the very top where you're just like screaming. <laughs> Not screaming, like belting. belting but, um, but it just feels so good to like be up there and to have that be and to end the act with everybody on stage with you two also screaming. Um, it, it's just such a powerful feeling to like go through that entire journey. That song is a beast. And it, there is just, it starts at one place and ends at a completely different place. And, and I've found so much in that one song every time I do it now. When do you feel like that switch happened? What when, do you mean? When oh. you start, stopped feeling like a no good deed off of it and started Honestly, feeling. After I came back from Frozen, my second standby contract on Broadway, I feel like I had, it was like post-pandemic, it was like the pandemic that changed it, I think. It was the pandemic that changed it, that I kind of was like, hey, let's dive in deeper to this particular switch. It felt like I identified with that song more. I like got it. I like understood it more. But you're no good deeds iconic too. <laughs> You're no good deeds iconic too. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> I watched that from sing. the maze too. <laughs> it is fun to sing, I really enjoy it. I'll say that. All right, Amanda. Um, I think it's interesting that the opening uh, and thank goodness all happen in front of people. So there is this layeredness about of Glinda that she is negotiating and I love that. Um, I I want to say thank thank goodness Glenda love it so much, um, so dimensional and like uh, the writing is just so good and it's it, it's heartbreaking but she's like you know choosing um, it, a lot I feel like a lot of choices are made in in that text and in that song and even emotionally and musically but I would also say. Um, when you ask the question, like, what kind of sets the tone kind of for your show, I feel like I've had the most discoveries recently and in the past couple years in the opening about what she is just coming from and what the task is now and what she's agreed to be. And I, I, I love that so much. So I'm giving you such a Glinda PC non-answer to this, uh, but that is my answer. <laughs> We'll squeeze one song out of you when you do the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, bring us home, Dahlia. So I feel like I'm a Defying Gravity Alpha simply because it's the song that I've come back to the most like in my life, like as a human. Um, and I mean, there's no better feeling than watching it, and there's also no better feeling than, than doing it and being, in, you know, giving that to somebody else. Like, I was the kid in the third row, like, <gasps> you know, like, when we're up there, we can, we can see y'all in those first several rows. 
because the light is on you. And oh my goodness, to see the faces, like it's just, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And it makes you just kind of go a little, little bit harder on nights when it's, when it's, you're feeling tired. So yeah, Define Gravity. And also I just feel like the moment to moment, like thought work that happens in that song in terms of like the discoveries happening in real time. Um, it's just unbeatable. So that one. Perfect. Unbeatable. Unbeatable. Amazing. Well, this has been so much fun, ladies. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, guys. We love you. Uh, I am at Pump Pump with us tomorrow night at Gosses Ballroom. I believe it's at 7 o'clock here. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you for Bye. Thank you.